Hello students and welcome back to another geometry video. You know what to do, pause the video, try this problem in your notes, and then unpause it. Let's do it together. So two gazebos are shown in similar pentagons and we want to find the perimeter of gazebo A. So the perimeter of um, gazebo A, of A, B, C, D, E. So Remember, we know that the perimeter of two similar figures, and we know, we're told, that these gazebos are similar pentagons. So that means the perimeter of A, B, C, D, E, the ratio of the perimeter of A, B, C, D, E, and F, G, H, J, K, is equal to the ratio of the corresponding side lengths. So AB to FG and so on and so forth, right? BC over GH, etc., etc., which is the same as the scale factor. So there are many ways that we could go about finding the perimeter. Um, the first, let's find the perimeter of gazebo B, because we have all of the side lengths here that we need. So, we are going to take 15 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18, right? 15 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15 plus 18, and we get 69 meters for the perimeter. So the perimeter of F, G, H, J, K. We could even erase this and we could say that it is 69 meters. Now, the ratio of A, B to F, G, this is 10. A, B is 10 meters. But we can leave off the meters for now. And F, G is 15. So, here we have a proportion set up, a proportion with one unknown variable, and the rest of the numbers are known. So, let's simplify this instead of perimeter A, B, C, D, E. That's a mouthful. Let's just call it P. We're looking for P, the perimeter. So, I'm going to cross multiply P times 15 equals 10 times 69, which is 690. Divide by 15 on both sides, and P is equal to 690 divided by 15, which is 46. 46 meters. So the perimeter of gazebo A is 46 meters. Now, there are many ways that we could check our answer. We know that since these are similar figures, FG and KJ, KJ, excuse me, are congruent, so that means that ED needs to be 10 meters. We could solve for each of these other sides using the scale factor between gazebo A and B, and then we could add them all up and make sure that we get 46. For the sake of the length of this video, I am not going to do that, but I will leave it as an exercise for the viewer. So, let's go ahead and move on to what we have for today. We are going to finish our work with 8.1 today. We'll not finish our work because we're going to continue to use these concepts that we have learned in 8.1. We're going to continue to use them as we go through Chapter 8, but this will be our last official lesson on Section 8.1. So, our learning target is that you remember what similar figures are. Obviously, 8.1 is all about similar polygons, similar figures, so that is our goal throughout all of 8.1, is how are similar polygons related. What are their properties? What do I know when two figures are similar? And the success criteria is you can determine if polygons are similar or not. So if I give you two polygons, are they similar? 
How do you know? So, that's what we're aiming to learn today. In order to learn that, we're going to need to review a few vocab words, a few important vocab words. So, you'll remember ratio and proportion. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities. The ratio of A to B can be written as A over B. And a proportion is when we set two ratios equal to each other, or two fractions equal to each other. Similar figures. This is 8.1. This is the goal to understand these uh, similar figures. So, similar figures are geometric figures that have the same shape, the exact same shape, but not, not necessarily the same size. So, same shape, not necessarily the same size. So you can see that in this picture right here, uh, the blue trapezoid and the green trapezoid uh, have the exact same shape. Right angles, right angles, uh, and they're, all the side lengths are proportional. We are making this smaller by a factor of three. So this scale factor would be one third. The scale factor from the small shape to the big shape would be a scale factor of three. So remember, similar figures, all similar figures can be mapped to one another using a dilation uh, or a similarity transformation, which is a dilation and a combination of something else. So here we have a dilation and then a reflection. We could also do a dilation and then a rotation etc etc so some more review about similar figures we talked about this in uh, the first part of section 8.1 corresponding parts of similar polygons hopefully you remember and I'm gonna write it down again corresponding angles are congruent if two figures are supposed to be similar the angles must be congruent. Corresponding angles are congruent. And a similarity transformation enlarges or reduces side lengths by a scale factor k. So corresponding side lengths are proportional. Angles are congruent. Sides are proportional which means if i multiply one of the sides by the scale factor i get the corresponding side in the other similar polygon okay angles are congruent sides are proportional then we have similar figures and if we have similar figures we know that angles are congruent and sides are proportional so Let's move on to our first example, which is actually a little bit of a review. We did a problem similar to this one in the first part of section 8.1, but notice how what we're looking for, it says find the length of the altitude, PS. So they want us to find this segment right here. But wait a minute, that's not a side length. We just talked about corresponding side lengths are proportional. So what is this? This is an altitude. This isn't a side. You might remember we mentioned in part one of section 8.1 that uh, altitudes, medians, we, uh, all of these segments within a triangle will be proportional if I have similar figures. So the altitude is actually also proportional, just like the corresponding side lengths are proportional. So, we, we know that these triangles are similar. That's important. That tells us we know that the altitudes are proportional. So, we could do uh, one of many things. We could find the scale factor from uh, PXZ to PTR. We could do that. And then we could multiply 20 by that scale factor and we would get s we can set up a proportion we can do so many things so let's find the scale factor 
from PXYZ to PRT. So if I'm going from the big shape to the small shape, I'm going to put the big shape on the bottom. So triangle XPZ, whoops, or PPZX will be on the bottom and triangle P, whoops, P, oh my goodness, <laughs> PRT will be on the top. And make sure we went in order, PZX, PRT, yeah, okay. Now, one side of PRT is, we're going to use the whole side. We could use half of it and it wouldn't make a difference, but we're going to use the whole side because side lengths are proportional. So we have 8 plus 8 is 16. Oh, whoops, and this should go on the bottom. This should go on the bottom with triangle PZX. Over 6 plus 6 is 12. Oh, not over, under, I'm sorry. 12 over 16. We can reduce this. If I divide by 2 on the top and bottom, I will get 6 over 8. Oh, haha. -ha. So actually, we can divide by 4 on the top and bottom, which gives us 12 divided by 4 is 3. 6 divided by 4 is 4. Ah, which is the same as 6 eighths, but we want the most reduced fraction. So this is our scale factor. Scale factor from triangle PZX to triangle PRT. So if I multiply 20 times 3 fourths, I get 60 divided by 4, which is 15. And x equals 15. The altitude equals 15. Now we could have done this another way. We found the scale factor and then we multiplied it by 20. We could have done this another way. We could have set up, uh, we know that 12 to 16 should be, that ratio of side lengths should be the same as the ratio of the altitudes, so they are proportional. And then we could cross multiply 16x equals 240, right? 12 times 20 is 240. Yes. And then we can divide 240 by 16, and oh, we also get 15. So you can do this whichever way you feel more comfortable with. Doesn't matter to me. Both of these are sound mathematics. But let's go ahead and check our answer. Find the scale factor, three fourths, because the ratio of the lengths of the altitudes in similar triangles is equal to the scale factor. We can write the following proportion. PS over 20 equals three fourths. Cross multiply. Oh, see, so they did a combination of the two different ways that we did it. They found the scale factor, and then they still set up a, a pre ah, set up a proportion. So, any one of these three ways will work. Uh, and you can always check your answer. You can set up a proportion, check your answer, make sure that the value you got for the altitude PS is actually proportional to the other similar figure. Okay, but we were right. We had 15 as well. Booyah. All right, last example for today. Last example of section 8.1. Deciding whether polygons are similar. We want to decide whether the blue polygon, A, B, C, D, E, and the red polygon, K, L, Q, R, P, are similar or not. Explain your reasoning. I'd like you to pause the video and write down what you think. No right or wrong answers. What do you think? Give it your best guess. We'll go over. We'll, we'll talk, obviously. Um, but based on what we've talked about in this video so far, 
What do we know about corresponding angles of similar figures? What do we know about corresponding sides of similar figures? Are these shapes similar? And explain your reasoning. So write down yes or no, why or why not. Okay, now let's talk about it together. I know that if two polygons are similar, the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. So, I need, if, if these polygons are supposedly similar, they must have congruent angles and uh, similar sides, proportional side lengths. So we can check both of these things. We know that one of the angles is congruent. We know that angle A is congruent to angle K. Um, but they don't tell us anything about the other angles. So, let's think about this in terms of a dilation, right? All similar polygons can be mapped from one to the other using some sort of dilation. So how could I dilate the blue shape to get the red shape? Or could I? Not how could I. Is it possible to map the blue shape to the red shape using a dilation, a reflection, something like that? Let's look at the side lengths. Let's look at, let's see, 9 DE. DE goes with RP. DE is 9 and RP is 6. So that is 3 halves. So the blue shape is, it might be 3 halves as big. Let's check some other side lengths. Let's see, CD. And what goes with C, D, Q, R? So C, D is 6 and Q, R is 4. That's 3 halves as well. And notice that I'm staying consistent. I'm keeping the blue shape on top and the red shape on the bottom. Because if I flipped them around, I would get 2 thirds and 2 thirds is different than 3 halves. So make sure we're keeping the blue shape on the top and the red shape on the bottom. Let's look at some other sides, right? Because all the sides need to be proportional, not just two of them. So we looked at DE, we looked at CD. Let's look at CB. CB goes with QL. CB is a nine and QL is six. Oh, that's three halves, right? Divide by three on the top and bottom. What about AB? AB and KL, this is 12 to 8. And if I divide by 4 on the top and bottom, oh, 3 halves. Last side, EA over PK is 12 over 8. Oh, we already know that 12 over 8 is 3 halves. All the sides are proportional. All the sides are proportional because they are all equal to the same scale factor. So the side lengths of shape of, of the blue polygon uh, are all three halves as big as the side lengths in the red shape. But that's not enough. I can't just have the sides be proportional. I also need the angles to be congruent. So, let's focus our attention at the top of this polygon. What do you notice? I notice those aren't the same. I don't need to bust out my protractor to see that this angle, PRQ, is larger than angle EDC. So, we can say angle D is not congruent to angle R. So, these polygons cannot be similar. They can't be similar. Similar polygons have congruent angles. 
these polygons do not have all of their angles are not congruent so these polygons cannot be similar let's check and see if we were right yep they found all the scale factors oh they put the red shape on the top and the blue shape on the bottom so notice how we had three halves they have the reciprocal of three halves they have two thirds and that's because they put the red shape on the top and the blue shape on the bottom so they keep saying scale factor of two thirds they're talking about going from the blue shape to the red shape we talked about going from the red shape to the blue shape so same thing and they also talked about this in terms of dilations dilations and reflections and they actually they so they shrank the blue polygon turned it into the green polygon and then when they reflected the green polygon, they saw, oh, 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 green polygon is not the same as the red polygon. So, remember that a dilation changes the size of a shape. A dilation does not change the angles within a shape. So, uh, if angles are different, that was not the work of a dilation. Those polygons are not similar. Okay, yeah, only A and angle A and angle K are congruent. So, because angle measure is not preserved, the two pentagons are not similar. Now, one more thing. Some of y'all are going to say, what? I didn't list off all the proportions like this. I saw that this top part was more flat than this top part and said no. That is wonderful. If you notice that the angle measures are not preserved, so they're not similar, you're done. You don't need to write all of this out. I did it solely to demonstrate sides are proportional, angles are congruent. If you notice that the angles aren't congruent, you can be done. You don't have to write out all of this. So if you're sitting here thinking, what, I did it wrong because I didn't list the side lengths? No, you're good. One counterexample. That's all you need to say that something is false, is one counterexample. So. If you said the angles are not congruent, the end, you would also be right. That is all I have for you today. So, you know what time it is. Please rate, assess yourself on your understanding of the learning target and success criteria. Do you know what similar figures are? what makes figures similar, how they're related, and can you determine if polygons are similar or not? Angles are congruent. Side lengths are proportional. Do you know that? Do you know what that means? If yes, great. Finish the homework. Help your friends. Help your classmates with their homework. If you are you think you got it but you might be a little iffy, that's fine. Time to try the homework. And if you are not feeling today's lesson, it's not vibing with you, that's okay too. Happens to the best of us. Just means that we need to ask some questions. We don't give up. We ask questions, we learn and we grow, but we don't give up. Here are some practice problems you can do to try the skills you have learned in this video. The ones on the left are like example three. The ones on the right are like example six. And, of course, we will end with our launch. Today's launch comes from Malala Yousafzai. And I have butchered that name before and I probably did it again. But they say, let us remember, one book, one pen, one child, and one teacher can change the world. One book, one pen, one child, one teacher. What do all these things have in common? One. It's easy to think, oh, I'm just a kid, which many of you aren't, aren't really kids anymore. You're kind of young adults. But anyways, it's easy to say, I'm too young. I'm too young to change the world. What can I do? You're never too young. You're never too young to change the world. You're smiling at somebody as they're walking down the hallway could change their world. 
knowing that somebody else wants to smile at them, thinks they're worth smiling at. You're inviting the lonely kid in the cafeteria to sit with you at lunch. You could change their world. You could change the culture of an entire school by inviting people to sit with you at the lunch table, by inviting people into your group uh, in ELA class or something. You can change the world with your attitude and your kindness. You can also change the world with your bad attitude and your rudeness. <laughs> but we won't do that. We want to change the world for the better. Oh, but one book, one pen, one child, one teacher. That's why I became a teacher. It would be very easy to say, well, the public school system is messed up, man. I'm not going to try to touch that. But I can make the difference that I can. And I'm trying. <laughs> trying very hard. So, I know that you're one person. I'm only one person as well. But we with our actions, with our attitudes, can change the world. And if you're a writer, this applies more to you. That's, we'll talk about that another time. But I want you to think, do you want to change the world? Like, what if you could change something about the world, what would you change? And how can you help change that? Because you probably can help change it more than you think. So that is my launch for you today. Take it with you as you go throughout your day. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Bye!